Sophia's gaze bore down on Sion, her expression thunderous as she declared that certain adjustments were necessary. Sion met her eyes, his face stealing with determination, though a hint of fear betrayed his resolve. Before he could react, Sophia hoisted him over her shoulder effortlessly, ignoring his loud protests as she stated they had to leave. As they descended the stairs, Sophia explained calmly that Hyun Ho and his mother had already moved out of the apartment Sion had been frantically trying to reach. She continued with a stern calmness, informing Sion that Noel was targeting every good child from Dead Mansion, and Sion was among those in Noel's sights. Maintaining her unreadable expression, Sophia swore by her family name, Alexander, to protect Sion's parent. Sion's expression softened slightly in contemplation as she assured him that, while they were chosen parents, she would defend them, so he needn't worry. As they continued down the steps, Sophia shifted focus, announcing it was time to concentrate on training, casually suggesting they restart the dreaded dead squat. The mention of this grueling exercise made Sion's stomach turn, memories of the painful training still fresh in his mind. Catching the fearful look in his eyes, Sophia glanced at him with a hint of amusement and remarked that it seemed he still remembered the dead squat and the ominous rule that failure meant death. A month after his intensive training, Sion rides along with Dimitri in a rugged modified Jeep outfitted with massive off-road tires, reminiscing with Dimitri about his experiences under Sophia's fierce guidance. As he describes the brutal dead squats, squats performed with TNT strapped to his lower body. His voice wavers. With a haunted expression, Sion explains to Dimitri that relaxing even slightly during the exercise would have been fatal. Dimitri, wearing sunglasses as he drives, smirks, admitting he thought those stories were exaggerated, but realizing Sophia truly took her training to another level. Chuckling, he remarks that the Alexander family operates in an entirely different league, sending Sion into a mild panic. Grabbing his head, Sion groans, pleading for Dimitri not to mention that name again. With an uncharacteristic shift in tone, Dimitri asks Sion, quietly but intently, about his progress over the past month. The sudden seriousness catches Sion off guard, and Dimitri glances sideways with a sly smile, pressing further about Sion's skills since training directly under Sophia. Sion leans back with a grin, teasing Dimitri by asking if he's curious enough to put himself to the test. Dimitri's only response is a smirk, signaling he's more than up for the challenge, though he keeps his eyes on the road, taking Sion's remark lightly. As they approach a parked car, Sion points ahead, asking Dimitri to stop. The jeep halts abruptly on the roadside, and Sion prepares to exit, but Dimitri calls out, removing his sunglasses to look Sion directly in the eyes. Dimitri asks him, with uncharacteristic concern, if he's sure he wants to return to school, hinting at the danger of Noel's intentions and warning that school could expose him to unnecessary risks. Clutching his bag tightly, Sion feigns disgust, brushing off Dimitri's concern as unnecessary, though the teasing only irritates Dimitri further. Dimitri, now visibly annoyed, raises his voice, insisting that Sion report any strange occurrences and not try to handle things on his own. Sion meets Dimitri's eyes with a serious look, recognizing the sincerity behind his words. But when Dimitri continues with more advice, Sion cuts him off, shutting the jeep door and declaring that he's had enough wisdom for one day. The exchange catches the attention of nearby students, who begin to murmur. They speculate in hushed tones about whether Sion is the infamous Sion Park who once ran with Joseph's gang, noting his aloofness and whispering about his apparent wealth and striking looks. Sion, hearing them, is briefly amused as he glances back toward Dimitri slumped over the steering wheel exasperated by Sion's flippant response to his concern. As the jeep pulls away, Sion stands alone, watching it disappear down the road, feeling a lingering sense of camaraderie and protection despite their banter. In the vast, dimly lit expanse of a warehouse, a handful of studio lights dangle from the ceiling, casting narrow beams across a grimy interior. Dust hangs thick in the air, carpeting every surface. A neglected white van, smudged with dirt and debris, sits to one side, 
untouched for what seems like ages. Strewn around the warehouse are an odd assortment of objects, a battered punching bag, worn out boxes, and stray furniture, all coated in a layer of grime. On a filthy mattress tossed carelessly on the ground, Zhang Yun lies, clad in a black vest and red shorts. He extends a hand, wrapped in rough, soiled fabric, reaching toward the studio lights as if trying to grasp something beyond his reach. The silence is broken by a voice commenting on the state of the place, noting the suffocating dust. Noel strides in, his figure cutting through the dusty air, and remarks on the unhealthy conditions of Zhang Yun's hideout. Zhang Yun, jolted from his thoughts, scrambles up, his gaze alight with a mix of anticipation and relief as he rushes toward Noel. His words pour out, a flood of pent-up questions, his tone teetering between eagerness and frustration as he presses Noel about his delayed arrival. Noel's reply is calm, explaining his recent busyness as he takes in the cluttered space, eyes lingering on a well-used punching bag. He casually wonders if Zhang Yun has made any additions to his domain since the last visit. Zhang Yun, retrieving a pair of scissors from the floor, nods, sharing that he spruced things up a bit. Suddenly, a thought strikes him, and with the scissors in hand, he declares he should serve Noel a drink to be a proper host. Noel watches as Jiang Yun unexpectedly lunges, dodging instinctively, only to realize Jiang Yun's target is a vending machine. The scissors pierce the metal with a jarring clang as Jiang Yun pries a drink free for his guest. Handing Noel the drink, Jiang Yun guides him to a pair of flimsy plastic garden chairs. Enthusiastically, he touts them as magical chairs meant to elicit nothing but truth. They settle into the chairs, Zhang Yun's gaze fixed on Noel with an intensity that belies his casual hosting. He announces his intention to ask a series of questions, insisting on Noel's honest answers. Noel, noticing Zhang Yun's unusually animated demeanor, observes that he seems in high spirits. But Zhang Yun's face drops into a stoic, almost vulnerable expression as he clarifies he's far from happy. He looks directly at Noel, his voice dropping to a level of pleading sincerity as he reminds Noel of a promise, a promise to find that person who clearly occupies a central place in Zhang Yun's mind. The request hangs heavy between them, casting a shadow over the scattered debris and dusty warehouse walls. Zhang Yun, leaning in with an edge of impatience, presses Noel about whether he's truly searching for that person and why it's taking so long. Noel, with his usual calm smile, reassures him that he's been diligent in his search. Yet, he adds that there's another task they must tackle first, something that can't be overlooked. They need to retrieve Sion. Noel explains that once Sion is with them, his promise to Zhang Yun can be kept. This plan doesn't seem to satisfy Zhang Yun, who frowns, slumping further into the creaky plastic chair. He mutters that Sion's involvement seems irrelevant to finding that person. Noel observes Jiang Yun's sudden seriousness as he reminds him that these are chairs of truth. If Noel isn't being honest, Jiang Yun wouldn't hesitate to kill him. Noel meets his gaze, leaning forward with a look of sincerity, assuring Jiang Yun of his honesty. But as he leans back, offering his usual smile and requesting Jiang Yun's trust, Noel's mind races. He had underestimated Jiang Yun, initially seeing him as nothing more than an eccentric with excellent fighting skills, someone easy to manipulate. But now he realizes Zhang Yun's intuition runs deeper than expected, a potential threat if not handled carefully. With a silent flick, Noel slightly unsheathes his blade, considering his next move carefully to avoid disrupting his plans. But before he can act, Zhang Yun, slouched and gripping his scissors tightly, mutters that if Noel intends to draw his sword, he should just go ahead and do it. Noel breaks the tension with a laugh, slapping Zhang Yun's shoulder in a playful gesture, teasing him for acting so serious. He promises, with feigned lightheartedness, to put more effort into finding that person. Zhang Yun looks back, unimpressed, as Noel stands, stretching slightly. Still laughing, Noel shifts the conversation, revealing that he actually came to the warehouse for a different purpose. He asks Zhang Yun if he wants to visit a fun place with him, his tone brimming with mischievous energy. Intrigued and momentarily distracted from his frustration, Zhang Yun perks up, Q 
curiosity sparking in his eyes as he eagerly asks Noel about this so-called fun place. As Sion slides open the door to his classroom, the usual hum of student chatter fills the air, but his presence draws a hushed wave of whispers. He strides in with his bag slung over one shoulder, eyes on his seat. The students murmur among themselves, astonished to see him back, as rumors swirl about his supposed suspension. Some speculate that the evidence against Sion, which initially got him suspended, had been faked, perhaps even concocted by Sion himself to avoid a loss of face. With a sigh, Sion settles at his desk, dismissing their words, irritated by the lingering suspicion. His thoughts drift back to his recent conversation with Marie, where she had informed him that she'd withdrawn the incriminating photos against him. She'd explained that removing the images would pressure the school to reverse his suspension. Holding up an unexpected image for her to see, Sion had asked if using this against the principal would suffice to clear his name. The photo, which disgusted him even to glance at, showed the principal posing awkwardly in a maid costume, attempting a sultry look. He'd grimaced, wondering aloud why Mari would have doctored it to look so distasteful. Mari, unfazed, had remarked that the picture was entirely unaltered. It was real. Even now, sitting at his desk, Sion cringes at the memory, clutching his head as if to shake off the lingering image that haunts him. His disturbed reverie breaks as a voice greets him, remarking that it's been a while. Sion looks up to find himself face to face with the three muscular bullies he used to hang around with, their smirks barely hiding a bitter sarcasm. They toss a mocking greeting his way, dripping with false camaraderie. Sion sighs, already sensing their intent. He knows they only feigned friendship, eager to ally with him when they believed he was the bully in those photos. One of them, the tallest and most intimidating of the group, puts on a menacing scowl, demanding Sion follow without a word. Outside in the parking lot, their voices echo as they confront him, the taunt obvious. They want to know if he's really not a bully. Their eyes narrow, as they accuse him of trying to make a joke of them with those faked photos. Sion says nothing, glancing around and noting the area's solitude as if to confirm no one's watching. His indifference seems to goad the leader, who lunges towards Sion with a clenched fist. In a calm, effortless motion, Sion flicks the bully's chin with a mere finger. The strike lands with a thunderous impact, the sound resonating off the parking lot's walls, and the brute drops to his knees, stunned by the unexpected force. The other two bullies freeze, their faces draining of confidence as they witness their friend felled by a simple flick. Sion, maintaining a calm but cool expression, holds his hand poised in the flicking gesture, reminding them that they were once in the same crew, so he'll go easy on them. For a moment, Sion recalls his brutal training under Sophia. Standing before him in a dark tank top, arms crossed, Sophia had scrutinized him, her words blunt and unforgiving. She told him his problem was his obsessive fixation on his restrictions, the three principles. Sion, bent over, breathing heavily, had been surrounded by weights and barbells, clad in a black training shirt, military fatigues, and combat boots. Sophia, dressed in a black vest and matching fatigues, approached him with a look of tough resolve. Though Sion acknowledged her advice mentally, his body still resisted. Seeing his struggle, Sophia had sighed, clearly prepared for a harsher method to make her point. She'd explained her next step. If he could only use a fraction of his power because of the principles, she would simply push his total power beyond his previous limits. Back in the present, Sion's gaze steadies on the remaining two bullies, his eyes filled with new confidence, his hands still in that poised, flicking motion as he readies to test Sophia's hard-won lessons. The second bully crashes to the ground with a heavy thud, knocked out cold. The last bully, eyes wide with shock, takes in the scene, hardly able to believe how quickly his friends were defeated. He stumbles back, fear in his gaze, before gripping the handle of a worn wooden mop with both hands, wielding it like a makeshift spear. Desperation seeps into his voice as he shouts at Sion, daring him to come closer. Sion, unfazed, surges forward in one swift motion. The bully swings the mop, 
but Sion leaps high, his legs slicing downwards with a force that shatters the mop's handle into splinters, scattering wood fragments like dust. The final bully stares, frozen, as Sion lands smoothly before him, back turned, calm and unaffected. Sion's expression shifts, serious and composed, as he states coolly that the bell has rung and it's time to return to class. Walking ahead, he leaves the last bully to his humiliation, knees buckling in defeat while the other two lay unconscious behind him, having felt the sting of Sion's wrath. As Sion makes his way down the empty hallway, he returns to his desk in class and subtly pumps his fist, admiring the quiet surge of strength coursing through him. Thoughts flash back to his training with Sophia, the agony, the persistence, and the skill it demanded, and he realizes it was all worth it. He recalls the moment he flicked the first bully, marveling at the unexpected force, realizing that while he's yet to fully master his new power, even partial control now yields astonishing results. A student in a brown cardigan vest over his crisp white shirt strolls toward the classroom, spotting another boy near the door. Pausing only briefly, he confirms he's found the right class, 2-1, before brushing past the other student with a cheerfully intense gaze fixed on his target, Sion. Inside, Sion sits at his desk, fist still clenched from his earlier fight, his thoughts racing. If only he could harness his full strength, he muses, both Noel and Zhang Yun would fall to him. Sion's thoughts halt abruptly as he senses movement, a boot hovers mere centimeters from his head, then connects with astonishing force. Sion flies back, his body skidding several feet across the classroom floor before he catches himself. Although he managed to block the kick, his jacket bears a dark stain from the impact against his arm, the fabric crumpled where it took the brunt. He looks up, eyes narrowed, as the cardigan-wearing boy stands, one leg still raised from the attack, a gleam of amusement flickering in his gaze. The boy, Zhang Yun, grins, assessing Sion with a chillingly casual air. He notes aloud how Sion has changed since their last encounter, acknowledging the improvement in Sion's skills. His grin deepens, his expression freezing the room with a menace that causes the onlookers to inch back in silence, tension thickening the air. Zhang Yun's words carry an eerie taunt, questioning whether Sion has finally moved on from being a good child. His smile holds a sharpness, eyes glinting in a way that drains warmth from the room. Sion's smile, dark and unyielding, mirrors the coldness of his opponents, understanding all too well the threat beneath Zhang Yun's cheery exterior. 